Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for another installment of our Climate Change Solutions Frontline Perspective from Around the Globe webinar series. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome. And for those who have joined us before, welcome back. My name is Erin Gill, and I'm a graduate research assistant at the Yale Center for Environmental Law and Policy, and I'll be your host for today. The Yale Center for Environmental Law and Policy, along with our partners at the World Resources Institute and Environmental Defense Fund, are very excited to continue our series with today's presentation by Dr. Paulo Moutinho. Dr. Moutinho joins us today from Brazil to discuss the key issues and potential solutions surrounding deforestation in the Amazon and the implications for climate policy. He adds his presentation to those of past speakers from Canada, Russia, the United States, and many others in our series, and continues our conversation about the climate policy perspectives of top emitting countries around the world. I do have just a few housekeeping notes before I introduce Dr. Motino. First, please note that we will leave time for a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. However, because of the large number of people participating, we ask that you submit your questions in writing using the chat feature on the right-hand side of the WebEx screen. You can send in questions at any time, um, send them in to the host, uh, and we over here at the Law and Policy Center will compile them and select as many as possible to convey to Dr. Mutino. Uh, note that when you send a question, please feel free to include your name and affiliation and where you're joining us from uh, so we can provide that information to the group. And also please note that we will be recording this presentation, um, both the audio as well as the slides, so you can access that at a later time. So without much further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Paulo Mutino. Dr. Martino is calling in today from Brasilia, the federal district in Brazil, where he is the executive director of the Amazon Environmental Research Institute, also known as IPAM. Uh, IPAM is a not-for-profit research, policy, and outreach organization that works to achieve sustainable development in the Amazon region. Dr. Martino has worked in the Amazon for over 15 years, conducting studies relating to the dynamics of deforestation and its effects on biodiversity, climate, and inhabitants of the region. Dr. Martino is an active participant in the UNFCCC's International Climate Change Discussion, and he has authored dozens of articles and books relating to Amazon deforestation and climate change. He is a co-author of the Compensated Reduction of Deforestation concept, which pleads for international financial compensation to developing countries that make efforts to reduce deforestation. This concept provides a basis for the development of the Red Plus mechanism, one topic that Paulo will cover this afternoon. Paulo, welcome. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our audience, and thank you for lending your valuable insight, experience, and expertise to our series. With that, I'll now hand the mic over to you. Thank you very much. Sorry. Uh, uh, Hi, Paula. We're having a little bit trouble hearing you. Uh, maybe the connection is bad. Please stand by, folks. We're having trouble. It sounds like with Paula's audio. Paulo, it sounds like your audio is just a little bit um, slow. Are you having internet connection problems? Stand by, folks. We had Paulo a moment ago, so I think he's just having internet connection problems from Brazil. Um, yeah, I think that I'm back. Oh, Still alive. You are back. Perfect. Okay. Okay, let's try again. Continue your presentation. Okay, okay. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, Jonathan, for for this uh, help with the web uh, stuff. Um, so, thank you all for for this opportunity. I would like to today uh, this presentation uh, present some cause of deforestation 
and talk a little bit uh, about what Brazil is doing to face deforestation and about the threats uh, related to, to Brazilian achievements to reduce um, the forest loss in the Amazon uh, region. So, and uh, I would like to conclude my presentation um, talking a little bit about, uh, about what still needs to be done to take the Amazon deforestation to zero. Uh, by the way, I would like to start uh, my presentation uh, uh, say a, a famous uh, phrase, uh, yes, we can. We can the end uh, of Amazon deforestation. Um, and I would like to demonstrating some thoughts and how to do that. This is a big challenge, but it's possible. So, on my presentation, I would like to relate it to all deforestation in terms of emissions. Of course, we have a lot of uh, a huge uh, biodiverse losses related to deforestation around the world. But um, for this particular presentation, I would like to see deforestation as a, uh, emissions, uh, um, the, the greenhouse gas emissions, OK? And uh, in this second slide, you can see uh, how the, Br the Brazilian uh, emissions profile is totally inverted uh, when you compare with uh, US or Europe. So in US and in Europe, the most part of uh, emissions of uh, carbon is coming from uh, energy sector. In Brazil, you have uh, the 60% uh, in 2010, uh, for example, coming from land use change, particularly deforestation and uh, particularly in the Amazon region. So uh, this brings to us a, a challenge to deal with deforestation, but at the same time uh, uh, means or represents an opportunity to reduce or to contribute uh, with uh, uh, climate change mit mitigation, um, reducing uh, deforestation in the region. So. Um, we can, you, you can see, uh, this is not a working like a PowerPoint, but anyway, we can use that. Um, you can see in this picture the, the Amazon basin, uh, in yellow uh, or, or orange, uh, you have uh, a deforestation uh, over the last 20 years, and you have the famous arc of deforestation. Um, I, I don't know if you can see my, my mouse uh, point, but uh, um, there is an arc of uh, uh, deforestation, uh, as you can see, and it's particularly in Brazil. Um, I hope that you can see the border of Brazil on, on this map. But this represents uh, one Texas deforested uh, over the last two decades, only in Brazilian Amazon, representing a huge amount of emissions uh, over, the, over this period. And there are a lot of uh, cause or drivers of deforestation. You have uh, cattle ranching activities or uh, crop plantations like uh, soybeans, uh, smallholders uh, activities, uh, logging, and more recently, all demand for um, biofuel could pressure uh, the, the Amazon region for more land to uh, produce ethanol or uh, biodiesel. Uh, so, but uh, even these days, 70% of deforestation can be explained by cattle ranching activities. So, extensive uh, pasture has been uh, 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 um, the, 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 the most part of uh, deforestation is because the people is converting forest in, to cattle, cattle uh, to, to pasture in, a, in using it in a in an extensive way. But the, there are a lot of uh, other drivers, but uh, the most important drivers that we have over uh, the last years or decades, it's the infrastructure investment uh, plans. So as you can see here, uh, over, the, over time you have uh, plans and more plans to invest, to make a huge investment in the infrastructure. And uh, now, 
uh, our government has the growth acceleration plan. Um, this is a, a huge investment of uh, infrastructure, particularly in the Amazon, in uh, dams and roads, um, in the other kind of uh, infrastructure to integrate it, the Amazon region to the rest of, uh, of Brazil. The most part of the, the, the most problem related to investment in, in terms of infrastructure is road, but not road per se, but uh, paved road. So in, in the Amazon, all the deforestation is concentrated um, uh, in each side of roads. 70% or 80% of deforestation is concentrated along the roads, especially paved roads. You can see the effect of the roads on this map. This is a uh, Rondonia um, uh, state and a deforestation in yellow. In 97, you have a deforestation like that. And 2011, deforestation like that. So it's a huge effect on roads and paved roads and deforestation. One big challenger is how to disconnect the roads from deforestation. Everyone likes to use roads, paved roads, when being in the Amazon, but we need to find a way to broke this link between roads and deforestation. In terms of investment, the, the government, the, historically the government is working uh, uh, to provide more investment to infrastructure um, the idea behind that is because uh, the, the government believes that it's fundamental to integrate it, as I said, the Amazon to the rest of a uh, of, uh, country and explore more uh, the, the resorts of, uh, of the region. And you can see here in terms of uh, millions of reais in 2010, in the, uh, it, in, oh, from 2000 to 2010, the investment in transportation, for example, including roads, and the investment on environment. So we need, we, if we want to face the deforestation in the region, change this kind of a pattern of uh, investment. And uh, the infrastructure investment, it's huge. It's uh, it's a it's uh, it's made in uh, it's made in, in a uh, making it in a large scale like we have uh, with Paki the growth acceleration plan in in the Amazon um, roads and a terminal for, for in, in uh, rivers and uh, um, and the dams but it's all this effort is integrated to other efforts in terms of infrastructure that has been planted to South America, like I used to, uh, in. it's an initiative to integrate all the South America in terms of infrastructure. But if we have, uh, you know, the future like the past in terms of uh, uh, the relation between infrastructure and the relation between, uh, between infrastructure and deforestation, uh, in terms of the business as usual scenarios, uh, we have. Oh, yeah. This I I have a one big uh, a little problem here. Uh, I was expecting um, um, a dynamic map here demonstrating the how would be the de deforestation in 2050. This is was uh, uh, um, a a paper published by in, in Nature uh, and leader by Britaldo Soares uh, Filhos, the, the Minas Gerais University, uh, but we can we we cannot see uh, this uh, dynamic on this map working right now. But uh, I could say that by 2050, uh, a large portion of deforestation, uh, a large portion of forest will be deforested. Um, if you will have the same pattern that we had in the past in running in the future in terms of investment in infrastructure. Everyone's, uh, as you all know, there, there is a growing 
uh, 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 demand for commodities around the world. So, uh, the, the, especially because you have the uh, the, the new uh, uh, nations like uh, or developing nations like uh, China is demanding more and more commodities, and there is a huge pressure on uh, Amazon Forest and, and now to make more make available more land for 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 agriculture. So you can see in this slide uh, the predictions uh, in terms of uh, expansion of production in Brazil. For example, for corn, you have a, a blue arrows indicating corn, soy, and sugar cane. Uh, the yellow bar represents the, the, the production in 2007, and expectation, the green bar, by 2018. Um, so. People expecting to produce more, but you mean it, and uh, and in this particular uh, uh, paper, the the author is saying that we need to expand uh, the production by 2018 like that. We need we need to make available more 15 uh, million hectares for production for crop production. So, but in terms of investment, the, the large part of investment, the large part of agriculture credit, it's to uh, a traditional uh, agriculture, those that is not related to any kind of uh, safeguards or any kind of uh, uh, worry in terms of sustainability. You have a now, in terms of uh, uh, agriculture plan uh, uh, of Brazilian government, a one investment of a 70 uh, billion US dollars, and if you compare with some kind of a new initiative that we have now to invest in a low carbon agriculture, uh, you have uh, almost three billion dollars for uh, those agricultures uh, agriculture that are concerning in terms of uh, emissions. So we need to invert this kind of. Uh, Investment or, or pattern of investment. Um, recently, we have more. Uh, uh, one important driver is the settlements. So here in this map, you can see all the, the settlements uh, of the Brazilian government in the Brazilian Amazon, and the red one is those that you have at least 80 percent of the uh, settlement area deforested. So uh, this is a new driver. Um, uh, of uh, deforestation, and uh, um, and uh, we need to uh, to deal with this new pattern of uh, deforestation. So you can see uh, in more detail this this uh, new pattern of deforestation. For example, from 2005 to 2010. Uh, Increase the proportion of, uh, uh, in terms of, let, take a look in on the uh, blue bars. Increase the proportion of um, uh, a small size of deforested areas. So this is not means necessary that a small holder is provoking that, but there is it indicated that you have a participation of small holders and settlers uh, in a, in a deforestation process. So in 2002, for example, 30% uh, were is area is smaller than 50 hectares, and now more than 70% uh, it's smaller than uh, 50 uh, hectares. So we changed the pattern of uh, deforestation in terms of the size of deforested area. Summarizing the threats of Brazilian achievements to reduce defore, uh, Amazon deforestation because as you know we are reducing a lot since 2004 our deforestation rate I will talk a little bit more uh, later about that but there are, there are f at least four threats the, the Brazilian government uh, uh, growth acceleration plan for example there is no uh, environmental safeguards for this uh, huge plan of investment there is, as I said, a growing demand for commodities around the world, and the settlement policy right now can cause a, a, part, a significant part of the current, current deforestation. And of course, one thing that I have, everyone knows about that, 
uh, it's a changing in uh, our environmental legislation. So there is a, a, a huge lobby to make our legislation, environmental legislation, more flexible. And uh, this is cause uh, uh, a huge uh, uh, effect in terms of uh, uh, planning to expand agriculture or even to uh, uh, in terms of giving a signal to the society that you can be forgiving uh, to uh, any kind of deforestation uh, that that was provoked uh, in the past illegally. So this is a bad signal for our society, and now uh, the, the co our Congress is debating uh, the changing on on a forest code specifically. So the Brazilian, uh, the Brazilian Amazon represents a huge carbon stock. So we we need to keep this in our minds. So this is, represents a huge opportunity. To keep keeping this forest extended, we are contributing a lot for a climate change mitigation. So in Brazil, maybe now talking about the good side of uh, of uh, uh, deforestation in terms of mitigation. Um, Brazil has has been uh, done a lot uh, about about uh, um, how to face deforestation in the Amazon region and how to deal with that. So one thing mentioned by Erin in, in at the beginning of the uh, presentation is uh, the compensate reduction of deforestation. This is, was a very important uh, concept supported by Brazilian government on that time in 2003 and the, and uh, later in 2005 by uh, Marina Silva, uh, our um, um, environment uh, minister of environment, and on that time, and it was a ba uh, uh, the basis for the basis for for created the Amazon Fund. The Amazon Fund, as you all know, it's the most important head. Uh, um, red uh, experiment around the world. So uh, we are operating uh, in a way that you could compensate those that make effort to reduce deforestation. This is fundamental because not just law enforcement, not just uh, uh, um, a good uh, process to monitoring in, uh, deforestation or even a good legislation, uh, all this stuff is not enough to save the Amazon forest. Uh, we need to uh, bring value for standing force, and uh, maybe the Amazon Fund open a window for for that. As I said, uh, one good indicator that Brazil is doing well in terms of uh, a reduction in uh, of deforestation is the reduction in deforestation rates uh, since particularly since 2004. And you can see that here, uh, for example, uh, here in the in the epsilon axis, you have uh, uh, the rate of deforestation in uh, square kilometer, and the brown bar represents the deforestation from 2000 to 2010. And you can see uh, uh, um, here how the deforestation rate uh, has been reduced. Uh, over over time, since 2005, 2000, uh, since 2005. Uh, another paper, uh, leader uh, also to Britaldo Suarez Filho uh, and, and me and others uh, uh, colleagues, um, we could explain uh, between 2020, uh, 2006 to 2009, uh, sorry, 2004 to 2006, um, that uh, 40 percent, around 40 percent of uh, of this the decrease in, in deforestation rates could uh, be explained by the international prices of commodities. Uh, but a very important proportion of this reduction reduction uh, can be explained by protect area that were were uh, created, uh, and particularly in 2004. And a part of this process, in terms of uh, reduction in rates, is related to law enforcement that increased a lot over the last years. So there are other other factors, as you can see. But the good, good, the big question related to that, to that is it, it's it's sustainable this reduction. 
So the big uh, decision or the big uh, um, things that happened in Brazil uh, over the last three, three years was our Brazilian climate change policy. That for the first time established uh, targets for, for emission in, in a national scale uh, um, in, 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 the, um, in a plan and it, it, it was voted into, into law. So in these plans, as a, a target, the Brazilian government now ha needs to reduce 80% uh, of deforestation in the Amazon region. So this is a very important step because uh, five years ago would be impossible to talk about targets to Amazon uh, deforestation. If, you, if you, we could reach this target, 80% of reduction in deforestation by 2020, we will, around 5.5 billion tons of CO2 will be avoided in terms of uh, emissions uh, to a atmosphere. So this is a huge contribution of Brazil uh, in terms of climate change. So in Brazil, has been done has been done more uh, like a climate change fund. This is a part of a national policy, a national climate change policy. Sorry, it's using euro, uh, but anyway, this is a a, a, a strong. Uh, uh, um, uh, well, the climate the climate change fund uh, it's a, a strong uh, tools for for um, to allocate it more. Uh, uh, research in, in terms of uh, uh, best practices to reduce emissions from different sectors in Brazil. So the Climate Change uh, Fund has now one, uh, 100 million euros per year. The other program, it's the ABC uh, program, uh, it's um, agriculture of uh, um, low carbon. So it's uh, allocating uh, almost um, 3 billion reais or 1.2 billion euros to reduce emissions from agriculture sector uh, in 2011-2012. Uh, uh, there is a growing opportunity like as a round table for soy, round table for sugar cane and, and beef. So a growing opportunity to, uh, with, with the market, uh, marketplace to exclude the foresters from uh, the supply chains. And as I, as I said, the, the creation of uh, a protected areas, specifically in 2004, uh, was a huge step to reduce deforestation uh, in the following years. Uh, here you can see in this map um, the, the carbon stock, in, uh, in this case, in uh, indigenous land. The, the green the lighter green is other kind of uh, uh, protect area, but the brown and uh, um, and the orange and the yellow are indigenous land. So this is very important. I, I would like to show that to you guys because uh, at least 30 percent of carbon stocking in Brazil and Amazon is on the hands of indigenous people and the traditional communities. So those that are playing as a guardians of forests. So they are a very important stakeholders doing a huge effort to protect forests. So those need uh, uh, more investment to continue to do what they are doing. But uh, in terms of best investment uh, by the Brazilian government, it's very low. Uh, just to have an idea, you have less than one dollar per hectare per uh, square kilometer, uh, uh, sorry, at one dollar per hectare per, per year in terms of investment in uh, indigenous people land. So it's a very, very low investment if you compare with those investments in terms of agriculture. Here you can see how the, the, the indigenous land or a protected area uh, create a barrier against deforestation. So this is a, a Xingu Park, indigenous Xingu Park uh, in uh, Mato Grosso and Pará State. And uh, here you have a deforestation until 2005. So they have 
the, the, the indigenous land play a, a huge role in terms of uh, uh, deforestation reduction. Again, in our scenarios projects, if the presence of indigenous land can reduce the emissions for future, in this case, the Shigu Park, the same park that I mentioned before, uh, can avoid emission in terms uh, in the future, and by 2050, for example, around uh, 500, uh, 500 million tons of carbon by 2050. So the other thing is very important in Brazil, happening now in, in, in Brazil, to face deforestation, to face emission from deforestation is um, uh, the, what the state is doing, the Amazon state. Every, some states now have their, their own target to reduce deforestation. And this, it's very important because uh, the red mechanism is it's the best way to engage those states in a, in a program to reduce deforestation because it means that some kind of compensation uh, the compensation for the effort to reduce deforestation in a state scale. So, but it's one thing very important that I would like to to, sh to mention here. It's what kind of red system that we we want to to Amazon. So right now we we have a lot of red projects. So I'm calling this uh, chicken pox red system. So every project's work, uh, working under uh, different uh, assumptions, uh, working on different accountability of carbon, and uh, having different approach in terms of stakeholders. So we needed to integrate it, all these projects in one system that could operate it in a national scale with uh, some subnational uh, um, uh, uh, scale. So one thing to do that is that what we are, we are calling red ju uh, jurisdictional. So one thing that we could operate in the national level uh, and to have an, a subnational programs, in especially, particularly the states, that could contribute with uh, the national targets. So this is a one thing that we need to do, and in Brazil is totally red to do that. The Brazilian government is working on a national red regime that could operate it and create rules to integrate it, all the efforts to uh, compensate those uh, doing effort to reduce def deforestation. But we need some kind of like it's a one representation that I mentioned before. The one it's a netted approach for red. You have a in the first box. The red national re regime with little box uh, inside the, the big box, you have a, 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 a subnational regime, and uh, in the new subnational bo uh, box you have a small a small box that could be a pr uh, be uh, programs or red projects. This is this is exactly what we are trying to do in or establish in in, in Brazil. The state is totally involved in, with that. This is Acre, for example. It's the most important state with uh, advanced uh, program uh, uh, in terms of red, in terms of uh, payment for environmental service related to uh, uh, forest and the uh, forest sector. So uh, it's possible if, to have soon in Brazil each state with your program operating uh, totally uh, uh, allocated in a, in a national regime. That that's the dream for that. Uh, you know, avoiding this approach project by project. So again, that that's a uh, um, um, uh, graph. So figure demonstrating the amount of uh, uh, carbon uh, CO2 that would be avoided uh, by 2000. 20, if we reduce 80% of deforestation, and we could use that, uh, for example, uh, these 5.7 billion tons of CO2, CO2 avoided could be distributed as a, um, how can I say, I, I could say a, a red certification for states, that's the right side of, uh, of this figure. 
and even to though uh, as a credit to uh, other projects uh, related to to uh, the Brazilian government programs. So I am not going in detail on that. I hope that you can see uh, more detail in this publication. This publication is very important for us in Brazil. So you can see more detail about this model to distribute the benefits coming from RED uh, among the states in the Amazon and among of governmental uh, and the national governmental uh, uh, programs. So, but uh, all the details you can uh, download that on from our uh, website and get more detail about the, the model that I mentioned before. But what still needs to be done? So to take the Amazon deforestation to zero, um, so it's a lot of things to do. Uh, that's the big problem. But uh, we did uh, a lot, but uh, we, we did more, particularly because we have those four threats coming, operating right, right now. So to face that threat, we need to consolidate the Amazon state red programs. So it's very important for the national re regime if each state operated uh, integrated to to uh, uh, a federal government, it operated integrated to a national regime. So we are doing a lot about that, but we need to consolidate that. So there is a, some kind of, uh, of uh, opportunity right now in Brazil to establish a national trading emissions uh, uh, system. So uh, this could be create some kind of a new initiative to bring benefits from red and from some kind of uh, uh, trading emissions uh, system. Uh, like, for example, the industrial states in the south operating integrated in uh, with uh, states in the north and in the Amazon in a way that can uh, uh, work in together and uh, reach the target established by the national policy for climate change. Uh, the, those uh, ABC programs, uh, the program for agriculture of low carbon needs to be expanded. The protect area needs to 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 uh, uh, needs to be expanded in 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 the, in the Amazon. At least there is at least uh, uh, around 10 million hectares in the Amazon forest that could be uh, allocated as a, a protect area. This is a very very important thing to do. So my our sense that there is no more area to establish protect area in in the Amazon. But this is not true. So there are a lot of a huge area uh, still available to protect area or for national forests or uh, a concession for for wood or things like that. So and there are another another uh, other other uh, um, um, things to do, and like for example, bring safeguards for our plan investment plan in terms of infrastructure. So and and the, the the last one is related to to the driver the most important driver uh, of deforestation the cattle ranching so we we need to intensify the cattle ranching activity so just to finishing uh, the the present presentation uh, we have some uh, um, good opportunity a huge opportunity like that. So we, there are a lot of uh, public forests. This is not pr a protected forest yet, but this is a, a public forest that could be allocated. It's around three, uh, 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 30 million hectares. Uh, part of this protect area is state uh, uh, land, other is a federal land. But there is a huge area that could be protected as a protect area, as a uh, um, a park as a, a biological reserve and, or a national forest. And there is now uh, some uh, kind of uh, um, conditions to reconciliate agriculture with forest conservation. One thing that I mentioned, and I mentioned now again, it's a cattle ranch intensification. This is a very, very important. If, you in, if we intensify the cattle Ranging, uh, ranging the Amazon from 1.1 1 
uh, had per hectare to 1.5, we could release a huge amount, more than four, uh, uh, a huge amount of, uh, of land, deforest land, to agriculture. So, um, cattle ranch intensification is very, very important. The other approach is related to uh, smallholders. As I said, the settlement is very, very important driver now provoking uh, deforestation. Uh, but we need now in Brazil, in the Amazon, some kind of a new approach for a regional low carbon development. We are establishing a red consortium of municipalities, of counties, uh, to deal with deforestation uh, in, uh, as a consortium, in to um, bring together some uh, different municipalities to work together and uh, deal with a deforestation process in, in a particular region. This is a totally new approach that has been developed in the, in the Amazon. Other things that I mentioned before, this is totally new, this is a potential for emission trading system in Brazil. As you know, we have, for example, California operating with Acre and other states in, in Brazil to create an emission trading system. But we could to have the same inside Brazil between, for example, uh, the Amazon states, as I said, and uh, industrial states like in Sao Paulo and uh, Rio de Janeiro. And for me, the most important thing is its education. So these two kids will be uh, 46 or 45 uh, uh, in 2050. So we need to bring education uh, as a, uh, a strong action, as a, um, a mechanism that be net that needs to be integrated in any kind of effort to reduce uh, uh, the climate change problems, uh, to reduce uh, the, the, the consequences of, of climate change. Without education, I think that will be impossible, uh, you know, pass all this dream that I tried to demonstrate with this, this demo, uh, presentation that's possible conciliating production, conciliating infrastructure with a, a, a forest conservation. So we deserve that for the next generation. So um, thank you all. I, I, forgive me uh, for my poor English, but I hope that everyone uh, enjoyed this, this uh, presentation and uh, I am open for questions right now. Thank you very much. We have a lot of questions coming in, um, so we're going to try to get to as many as possible, but um, please bear with us since uh, we've got such a great collection and we probably... How long do we have for... Uh, we've got about Sorry. 20 minutes, so we'll have, we'll have time for, okay. you know, enough. Um, so one question that came in that I think is very interesting uh, is from Rick Love, and he asks whether individual Amazon states pass their own law on deforestation um, and ask if they do, is it possible that a mix of laws and policies will ultimately be in effect? Um, and I guess to add on that, on my Hello? own side, do you find that that Hello? sort of is going to cause problems? Yep. We can hear you, Paulo. Erin? Er yes, Paulo. Hi. Yeah, I, no, not very well. So I think that we, you could write, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. I think other folks can hear you too. But uh, we will we'll put the question in writing for you, and uh, you can see it that way. Very. Uh, hang in there, folks. I think we're having a little bit more audio trouble, but we're getting Paulo the first question uh, so he can answer that. And in the meantime, um, please continue. I guess, like I said, we've got a lot, um, but we're welcome to sort of find the ones um, that folks that folks can, um, you know, be sort of general interest and things like that. So um, we're gonna follow and see what you have to say. Paulo, can you hear me now? Yes. Hang in there, folks. Yeah, I can hear you, but uh, there is a. 
echo behind your voice. Uh, okay. So if you write, it would be great. Yep. We're going to put the question in the chat panel for you. So just hang up on some typing it. And folks on the line, thanks again for your questions and just stand by. Paula, that should be in your inbox now or your chat panel. Did you see the question, Paula? From Ruth Love? Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me see. So uh, again, I'll repeat it. Yeah. Okay. Now. Thanks for for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I got it. I got the question. Um, yeah. Well, there is. I think that this is the same for every country. Uh, and you have the state law, or the state laws, establishing some kind of rules for some things. In this case, deforestation. But uh, when you have a federal law, uh, this federal law in some aspects can replace the, the state law. So it's possible, that that's the big deal, I think that it's possible to combine uh, what the state is doing in terms of uh, uh, legislation for red with uh, the planning of uh, the federal government is doing uh, in terms of a national regime or the rules to regulate this regime. So it's totally possible uh, to do that, and uh, you, we could mix, uh, as as uh, it's mentioned by by uh, yeah I, get, I didn't get uh, you, uh, his name, but uh, by our, our fellow. Great, thank you, Paulo. Is my sound any better for you now? I guess not. All right, yeah, I, yeah, I can, I can. If, if, if it's not strong to you to continue to use uh, the chat, would be, would be nice to me because I can get exactly what uh, what people are asking for. Great. So we will put in another question. So, um, yeah. uh, and then we'll. we'll yeah, I got it. Um, and that should be coming in soon. Um, this one comes from Hans Foster. He asks, net deforestation could also be brought to zero by increasing afforestation and forest restoration efforts. Of course. Okay, but I think before... Sorry. Yes. Did you see okay, the before this question, uh, we... Yeah, we have uh, we had uh, other uh, uh, previous questions from Oswald Carvalho, I think. So let me answer the first question and then now the, the, the question uh, from Evan, uh, from the from the Haynes, I think. Yes. Okay. Great. So the question is: If the intensification of cattle, cattle production is one of the main way to decrease deforestation, what? Has been done by the government and by the private sector. So this is a very, very uh, important question. Um, I, I feel that we need to do a lot in terms of uh, policy uh, to intensify uh, the cattle ranching, uh, the cattle production in the Amazon. So we have uh, some effort in terms of. Uh, for example, the round tables of beef or uh, effort uh, for some uh, groups of, uh, of um, uh, producer in the Amazon trying to implement best practices in, in, uh, in, in, in their lands to avoid uh, a, a consequence in terms of um, uh, consequence of, uh, in terms of, um, uh, of deforestation. Uh, for example, there are um, the idea in terms of certification, the some uh, um, registry of best practices in the Amazon uh, that uh, put together uh, some uh, big production of uh, producer uh, of beef, so to operate it in a uh, in a sustainable way. But I think that we need to do more. So we need more in terms in terms of policy coming from the government. So. Uh, 
And uh, one thing is investment. One thing is it's uh, reduced investment to in, in terms of uh, uh, capital ranging or uh, in an extensive way, and provide more credit to uh, cattle ranching, uh, the cattle intensification. So um, I am saying that because Brazil has this uh, huge contradiction in terms of a macro policy. At the same time that you have uh, people in, uh, from the government investing in a way to reduce deforestation, the other side, uh, the, the other part of the government, uh, it's trying to invest in more in cattle ranching in an extensive way. So we need to some kind of a reconciliation in terms of macro policy to bring some kind of a, a, a result for a cattle ranching activity in terms of a, uh, its impact uh, on, on deforestation. Yeah, um, the other question is about deforestation and uh, afforestation or reforestation. Yeah, you're right. So we are we have a lo a large area, particularly in in a in a, in a riparian zone. So the, the forest along the rivers, uh, we need a lo a, a huge area available for forest recovery. Uh, and it, this is a very important biodiversity side, uh, in, even for, for um, a carbon sequestration by, by the forest growth. But one thing that's very important to, to mention here is that we avoiding deforestation is much more cheaper than uh, uh, planting uh, uh, trees. So we need to do, to do the both, but we, we don't need uh, uh, it's not necessary, you know, to have a, a large area deforested to start uh, forest recovery. So we need to combine the con for, uh, forest conservation uh, in terms of uh, uh, the na native forest, in terms of uh, Amazon forest, and at the same time that you promote the forest recovery in those areas uh, already deforested. Great, thank you. Um, uh, we sent you another question. This one is from Ainsley Smith with Amazon Watch in DC. Um, yeah. He right. notes that under the new forest code, there's expected to be a 47% increase by 2020 in deforestation uh, that she notes is disheartening. And so she was wondering if you could speak about the new forest code and how that plays into your work. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's very difficult uh, to say scientifically that the change in the forest code will increase a lot deforestation in the Amazon region. So there are a lot of uh, uh, possibilities to, you know, the changing that they are planning, the, the, the congressman is, is planning now could bring more deforestation, but uh, we are still working on that scientifically. So because that is very hard to, to affirm that the forest code changing uh, will provoke more uh, deforestation in the future. I believe that will be very, uh, the, the chance for that is very high, but, uh, but it's, not, it's not easy to affirm that. But one thing that I could say about forest code, it's the, in terms of signal to, to, the, to the society. When you say that for those that conscientially uh, provoked illegal deforestation in the Amazon, now is forgiven, so you have an amnesty, so this is a bad signal because you are saying for the next generation of deforesters, that okay, I could, I can't continue the force because some change in in the legislation in the future can forgive me for what I did in terms of deforestation in the past. 
So this is a this is a it's a for me it's some uh, my particular uh, opinion about that not necessarily the opinion of my institution but uh, my opinion is that this is a, a moral uh, uh, situation it's a so it's a bad signal. Um, um, the other thing is about the force code is that the force code it's the change in legislation it's to solve solve the problem creating the past but they are not uh, dealing with what to do in the future for example there is a, a, a possibility if you consolidate it and legalize all the open open it area or the forest area in the Amazon uh, changing the legislation uh, it is not means that we uh, it, it, that it, I'm sorry, I'm confused a little bit with my my words here. But the idea is that the, the force code, the changing, solved the problems uh, created in in the past, but is not dealing well what kind of uh, some type of problem that we could have in the future. For example, if you go to the, uh, if you deforest in the next over the next two or three years. Uh, the, the force code, as has been uh, as has been proposed by by the Congress, could legalize that uh, deforestation made over the next years. So, because that we could, there, there is some kind of a way using the legislation, has, how ha, has been proposed by the Congress to legalize other. Uh, um, deforestation is in the future. This is this is a, a big a big challenge and how to uh, avoid that. So uh, I think that we have another. Um, yeah, we do. Uh, I'll let you read that. But for the group, uh, what this is talking about is um, the idea that forests provide a variety of different ecosystem services and. Tatiana Alves asks whether there are uh, mechanisms in place to prevent um, people from paying twice for the same service um, through compensating legal reserves. Oh, yeah. This area. So, Paulo, I think, is going to address that. Thanks. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a very important question because I said that we cannot continue to work in a project by project approach uh, for red and even for uh, projects related to payment for environmental service so because that we need a, a, a high scale uh, regime operating or regulating this kind of uh, of uh, new uh, mechanism to bring economy to bring investment for environment so because that we are put a lot of effort to saying that it's important for pay for any kind of uh, program for payment for environmental services or even HAT that we need a national approach uh, and in a national approach where each subnational program could fit in this uh, in this national uh, program in a way that you could to be sure you could to be sure that you are uh, avoiding a double accounting for example or paying twice for the same for the, the same service so it's very difficult to do that if you have a, a project by project approach because as i said each approach has their assumption each approach uh, has the accountability for carbon and, for example, or for that service. So we need to integrate all if you have some kind of uh, efficiency in terms of uh, climate change mitigation. Uh, we have time for one more question. Um, we're going to send it to you over chat, but um, it involves the differences between RED and RED Plus. And uh, Vomik Shah asks whether Brazil's focus is limited only uh, to red or also red plus uh, or both um, and and how would the red 
plus to be applicable in Brazil's conditions versus just the red? Um, if there is a, a, a country in the world prepare it to establish a red a red uh, program in a national scale this country is Brazil uh, as I said there, there are a lot of threats uh, in, in terms of uh, threatening our progress in terms of uh, deforestation reduction but we have fundamentals uh, elements in our hands uh, as I demonstrated during my presentation, that that could be used to to uh, establish a red regime in a national scale. So, um, as I said, so the national policy establishing uh, targets, uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, learning uh, experience uh, coming from Amazon Fund. The states in the Amazon, it's totally engaged on this in this discussion, um, and we have uh, um, the, the government, uh, the national government, working on that. But there is a one additional threat for all this stuff related to Red Plus. So it's money. So the money is not coming uh, to those that are promoting initiative related to Red Plus. So this is crucial. For example, the, the states in the Amazon, uh, in the particularly Acre states, they are establishing different uh, institution in state institution to deal with a, a red program or the payment for, uh, for environmental services program at the state level. But politically, there is a high cost because there is no, uh, how can I say? Some good signal that the money will be come soon to compensate this effort. So we have a, um, a delicate moment now related to red in Brazil. So we did a lot, but we cannot see uh, compensation uh, yet for, for this uh, effort. So this is a, a situation that we have now in Brazil. Great, thank you. Um, I know there's still so many questions left unanswered, but we are now past our one o'clock time limit. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, but Paulo, thank you. This has been a really great discussion and thank you to everyone who joined as well as those who sent questions. Um, this has been great and it's great to see interest in this topic. Um, in case you'd like to revisit this discussion, we will be uploading today's presentation and the audio online after the event, and you'll get an email with the link to this recording. So on behalf of the Yale Center for Environmental Law and Policy and our partners, the World Resources Institute and Environmental Defense Fund, thank you very again to Dr. Paulo Butino and to all of our attendees. Um, Paulo, this has been wonderful and we're really thrilled that you were able to add to this contribution and this conversation. Uh, we will be in touch with all of you soon with more information about the next events in our webinar series and we hope that you will all join us again. So with that, we're going to end the presentation and thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, everybody. I can provide answers by email if you are uh, wants to, to talk a little bit more about this issue. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you.